Imagine your town tried to dictate what you could or could not do within your own home. Well, that's exactly what's happening to one of our clients because he hosted Bible studies and church on his property. Hi, I'm Peyton Luke and you're watching First Liberty Live. Today we're going to talk about a case from Ware, New Hampshire. Now a pastor founded a church on his own property and was even using a barn on his property. But soon he received a cease and desist letter from the town because they said he shouldn't be hosting these religious gatherings. So here to talk about all the details today is Senior Counsel of First Liberty Institute, Jeremy Dice. Jeremy, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Of course. So this case is about a church and a barn on personal property. Give us the background and all the details. Yeah, Pastor Kalugian is a lay minister. He has a full-time job elsewhere, but he also is planting this church called Grace New England right there in the town of Ware, New Hampshire. And it's a small gathering right now, you know, less than 30 people or so come on an average Sunday. And so they don't have a, a, a need or they can't even support a, a full-size church or renting a location. They just don't have the funds to be able to do that. And so they've done what a lot of churches do and a lot of new churches do. Uh, they just decided to use their home. And it just so happens that he has a very nice uh, property there and where, including a, a retrofitted barn, a barn that's been updated and has a very nice space inside. They've used this barn for uh, various political gatherings, social activities, a wedding, uh, birthday parties. They've all been doing these various uh, events at this property, no problem. But as soon as they start using the barn as a church, well, now the town of Ware has a problem. And they say, look, uh, you need to come in and get a, uh, a site approval plan submitted and go through the whole process of becoming um, uh, approved by the city to use that, that church as a, or that barn as a church. Uh, and, and that would cost an untold amount of dollars for the pastor to do that. And furthermore, it just happens to be the biggest room in his house. This is his home. Now, if he were to host that church as he does sometimes in his living room or as he's done uh, Thanksgiving dinners and uh, holding uh, communion even in his kitchen, uh, they've had, I guess, no problem with that. But why, if, if they say you can't use the largest room in your house, the barn, uh, why couldn't they say you can't use your kitchen and your, your study when you're doing counseling and that sort of thing? And so he's had to push back on that and say, look, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through that process. And here's the other little wrinkle. The ordinances of the town of Ware permit a church to exist within that district. And yet they're still asking in, for him to come and seek permission to have a church within that district. It really makes very little sense. And we're not entirely sure why the city is being so obstinate on this issue. Uh, they can have Super Bowl parties with no problem, book clubs without a problem. And now when you try to host a church inside this barn, now they have a problem. I don't think the law is going to support this. So just to clarify, the cease and desist letter only addressed the religious gatherings, not the weddings, the political rallies or anything else. That's right. In fact, a couple of years ago, when the barn, when they purchased the property, they went to the city council and said, look, we're thinking about turning this into a wedding venue or maybe an events venue of some sort. Is that a problem? Are you guys OK with that? And the, the, the city council said, yeah, that's no problem as long as it's like a uh, an, a a not-for-profit uh, venture, which it was going to be. They were actually going to be hosting events for disabled people and, and sort of like Nights of Joy, that kind of thing for them. And they said, that's no problem. You don't have to worry about getting permission to do that. You can just use your property for your own purposes. And so they, 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 they ended up not doing that program, but they didn't think that, you know, having a couple people over to have church services would cause a problem. One of my favorite stories of this situation is that just before we filed this lawsuit, the pastor had a new heater installed inside the barn. It's kind of cold in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And uh, an inspector came by and was reviewing the materials and looking at the, pro the, the property. And he saw the pews. He's got some of these older pews, character pews in the, in, the, in the barn. And he said, these are really great. In fact, I have a pew a lot like this. And it's sitting in my garage. It just so happens it was the, the, the week before the, the Super Bowl. And he said, in fact, this Sunday, there's going to be a bunch of people in my garage uh, sitting on that pew watching the Super Bowl. And the pastor was like, well, did you get a permit for that? And he, the, the inspector said, no, I guess I didn't. Well, I mean, this just goes and shows the hypocrisy here. You could have people sitting there 30, 40 deep inside of a garage. Uh, but if you gather together to, to worship Jesus, now the city requires you to seek permission from the, the, the town government. That's clearly not what the law requires. No, oh, this seems like such clear religious discrimination because people gather in their homes all the time to do Bible studies, book clubs, birthday parties, special events. So it just seems so funny that this is what they're targeting. So then what did the city of Ware, what was their reasoning behind it? Did they give any reason? 
Uh, they really just want them to go through the site approval plan process. And I, I don't quite understand why that is, but uh, especially since the ordinance says you can have a church as a matter of right within this district, I think they may want to say something effective that we need to make sure it's a safe environment and all that. And I suppose those are legitimate needs to, to some extent. But if they're saying that, hey, we need to have that because you're a church, not because you're a book club or because you're watching the Super Bowl party, well, now they've entered into a level of inequity and discrimination that the law does not support. Yeah. And so this process, by filing this lawsuit, we're requiring the city to articulate precisely why they demand this of Pastor Kalugian, why this church is different from a an Oprah book club or a Super Bowl watching party or a birthday party or whatever it is. Is it just because the Super Bowl only comes around once a year and this happens to come around every Sunday? Well, that doesn't seem to make sense. If you're concerned about people's safety, whether that's one day or 52 days out of the year, shouldn't make a difference whatsoever. Thankfully, the First Amendment and federal law uh, requires the city of Ware and other municipalities around the country to respect the free exercise of religion by religious organizations when they use their property for religious purposes, which Pastor Kalugian is doing here. Uh, and so we think he's squarely within the law here, but we're going to find out if a federal judge agrees. Yeah, because I was just going to say it's crazy that this is happening in America because there's such foundational laws to protect this kind of thing. So it's just mind boggling. We're even having to have this discussion right now. But what kind of penalties now is Pastor Kalugian risking because of this? What did they say? Did they give him a timeline? It's like, if you don't respect this by the certain time, these things are going to happen. Yeah, they were going to they were going to enforce the penalties that they have under their code. So they could be facing fines and, uh, you know, shutting down the property for any serv uh, religious services. And that's the other funny thing about this case is that they found out about it because there happened to be a flyer in town. Uh, and, the, and the code inspector happened to see the flyer, took it down and went to the pastor's house and said, hey, uh, you need to get uh, permission to be able to do this, showed up at his house to do it. And even said during that interview that the, the code enforcer had with the pastor that, you know, he was the, the son of a pastor, but he himself was an atheist. And uh, while that didn't apparently have anything to bear with the, the situation there, was insisting that the pastor go through the entire permission process in order to use that church or that property as, as a church service. Uh, again, this is why we have the First Amendment. This is why we have federal law that restrains government from telling you how to worship, how to use your property for religious purposes. Uh, and they're going to be uh, facing a really tough slog to be able to, to require this church to disband or go spend an inordinate amount of money to be able to use that property. Or if they have to go and rent space, uh, that's going to be a burden on them as well. The goal eventually is to go to another space anyway. It's just they don't have the funds and the, the people with which to be able to do that. Yeah, it's just in the meantime, as right. the church continues to grow. Yeah. So tell us about the pastor and, and how all of this with the case is impacting his family and the ministry. You know, it's tough, right? They, they live under the, the auspices that at any moment the city could come in and, and cause them problems. They, they need the protection of the federal courts here. The law has guaranteed them the right to be able to freely exercise their religion on their property. And that's been called into question. And so anybody left in that situation ought to feel vulnerable because they are. Uh, at any moment, the city could try to in, impose their, uh, their, their rules against them, force them into a different court proceeding to try to get them to stop those, those activities, maybe send out fines or citations that would get them to, to stop that through some sort of uh, you know, intimidation through fines or penalties. Uh, that shouldn't be the case. Pastoring a church and planting a church is hard enough. Uh, they shouldn't have to worry about the church coming around the, or the, the city coming out there and saying you got to stop using your house for religious purposes. Yeah. So I have a question that I'm sure some of our audience is interested in hearing your perspective on. So from a legal perspective, what is the difference between people gathering for a party, a wedding or a political rally and people meeting for church? None in the eyes of the law. They're just people gathering and using a public space. Actually, I'm wrong on that. There is a little bit of a difference. The religious gatherings are afforded more protection under the law wow. than any of the other protections. Now, they're all guaranteed First Amendment protection. But those expressive activities are also religiously expressive activities. So the First Amendment principles that apply to free speech principles, those still apply. But we also get the benefit of the free exercise clause, the establishment clause, and then federal law that protects religious exercise as well called ARLUPA, the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. Here we have a religious institution, the church, trying to use property, the barn, for religious purposes, but have faced a substantial burden by the city, the cease and desist letter, without any compelling justification being given to us or any proof by the city that they've engaged in this uh, action through the least restrictive means possible. 
I think that's why the city of Ware, the town of Ware, is going to have a really hard time succeeding in this lawsuit. And eventually, whether it takes us going to the Supreme Court or not, this church is going to be working in this barn long term. Yeah, because this is not a new or, or unusual legal situation, because this has been settled in the courts for years. Yeah, our loop has been around since the year 2000. So we've got 24 years of federal law that has only reinforced that principle that the First Amendment already articulated 200 plus years ago. So this should be almost a foregone conclusion. Now, nothing is, of course, in a federal court case, a legal case like this. They're all difficult cases to run. That's why we have top attorneys working on this throughout the country with us on this case. But I, I'm very confident in our odds for success with this case, and we need to be. If if the town of Ware can tell Pastor Kalugian, you can't use the largest room in your house for religious purposes, it can tell you and me that you can't have Bible study in your house on Friday night. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. So what has First Liberty done about this case in a legal sense? We filed a lawsuit, a federal, made a federal case out of the whole thing, but at the same time we filed what's called a, a request for a preliminary injunction, a motion for a preliminary injunction, which if we're successful in getting that preliminary injunction, that will mean that the pastor can use his church and his, his barn without any concern about being fined or penalized while the lawsuit continues. Uh, and since that, that requirement uh, comes with the, the, the need to prove that, you've, that you have a likelihood of success on the merits of the case itself, it's a strong indication by the courts to say, hey, uh, this is a, a righteous case. You're likely to win later on. Maybe the city ought to reconsider their actions here and give up. Sure. Is there anything else you would like to add or you think it's important for our audience to know? I just encourage folks to go to firstliberty.org to keep up with the case. Mm -hmm. To find out more about First Liberty Institute, you can check out firstliberty.org. And to get the latest breaking news about our cases, you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter, First Liberty Insider. First Liberty, fighting for what matters most.